Have you ever ruined someone's vacation? Wow. That's impressive. What about a group of extremely wealthy people? So the island of Mo'orea in French Polynesia is a really interesting place to work. So the local Tahitians, while they are rich in cultures and traditions, generally live a pretty modest lifestyle. This is in stark contrast to the tourists that visit the island. We're talking some of the wealthiest of the wealthy people that sail in on their yachts or they show up and hang in the resorts on the island. So the social climate is pretty odd. You have the economically modest Tahitians, the extremely wealthy tourists, and then in the middle you have this ragtag scruffy group of scientists. And so one day while living and working on Morea, I went out to conduct some behavioral trials for one of my experiments. You may be familiar with this experiment. This all started with the invention of a massive video camera frame. What the fear frame allows us to do is remotely observe fish behavior. One of the behaviors that I was particularly interested in is how fish avoid predators. So we randomly assign one of the two frames to be visited by a predator regularly over the course of a day and then alternate the assignments for each subsequent day of the experiment. Guess who the predator was? That's right. Spear fishermen are increasingly affecting coral reefs around the world, often because of subsistence fishing. People need to eat to survive. Fish are right there. They go in. They spearfish them. We wanted to measure how spear fishermen affect reef fish foraging behavior and whether these effects depend on the social interactions of the fish themselves. Right off the bat, this day was a memorable one because we had an old enemy return, trade winds. While massive and impressive, the fear frames, they're built out of thin PVC, so these uh, wind-driven currents could tear the frames to pieces. That is a heck of a lot of time and money down the tubes. And this is the first day that we've ever faced harsh weather while the frame was deployed in the field. So I'm thinking about this as I'm driving my boat up to the field site. I throw anchor next to where I know the frame is, and I jump in to see what the damage is. Now, there was some damage. One of the top crossbars of the frame had snapped because of the current. Fortunately, I had my trusty cable ties with me, which are a field biologist's best friend, and I was able to repair the break in just a few minutes. So I'm feeling relieved at this point. I thought this thing was going to be annihilated when I showed up, and, you know, it stood up. So feeling pretty cocky, feeling pretty good turn around to swim back to the boat to start getting the trials going. I pop my head up to look for it so I make sure I swim in the right direction. I notice that the boat is gone. It's one of those situations where you don't really believe your eyes so you kind of do the double take. Nope, no boat there. After a couple of seconds of shock, I turn downwind to see where the boat might have gone and sure enough, it is being blown rapidly directly toward the Hilton Resort. The Hilton Resort is one of the most swanky resorts on the island, and the waterfront bungalows where my boat is headed, they run about $800 a night. I have to swim harder than I ever have in my life to try to catch this boat before it destroys a waterfront bungalow. And I get sued for an unbelievable amount of money. So I'm freestyle swimming, as fast as I possibly can to catch the boat. I probably cross about a couple hundred meters, maybe an eighth of a mile. I'm able to get to the boat. I leap in. We haven't hit the Hilton yet. I get the boat engine started and I gun it. Now I'm heading back to where I know the fear frame is. The trouble is, is I don't know exactly where the boat was anchored. So I have to drive the boat up to where I think the anchor might be and then jump out to look for it. Of course, I can't have the boat get blown away while I'm swimming around, so I just grab a bit of line that was in the boat, I tie it off, and I jump out. So I'm holding onto the boat as it's getting violently jerked by the wind. So I'm swimming, getting yanked back, swimming, getting yanked back. All the while, I'm trying desperately to get a visual on this anchor. I've got to reattach this anchor to the boat, otherwise I have to scrap the whole day of research. So I swim around, swim around, I cannot find it. I jump back into the boat, I pick a new spot, jump back in, again, feverishly, looking around for the anchor. Where is this thing? As I get yanked back. Finally, I spot the anchor. Amazingly, I realized that it was actually the anchor chain itself that had snapped. 
So now I have to gather up this heavy, heavy anchor while I'm holding onto the boat in one hand, which is yanking me back. Uh, pick up the anchor and throw it back into the boat while I'm reattaching the anchor to the line We are rapidly drifting back toward the Hilton I get the knot tied in time to get the boat engine going again avoid smacking into the Hilton I drive back to the site. I throw the anchor hoping that my knot is gonna hold the boat seems to be holding on tight It looks like I just barely am gonna be able to start my behavioral trials on time I think I burned about 10 to 20,000 calories. I will always wonder what would have happened if I didn't catch the boat in time and it demolished one of those waterfront bungalows. Thanks for watching. I've got plenty of new crazy adventures from the real world of science on the way, but I need your help. Please subscribe and like us on Facebook and share these videos with, I don't know, every person you've ever met. Thanks a lot.